midnight raids on their homes. Police with battering rams breaking down their front doors at midnight at one or two in the morning. Never explained why law enforcement was after them. They were forbidden to tell anybody what was going on. That was radio host Rush Limbaugh on the incredible story coming out of Wisconsin. A story that alleges how a Democratic prosecutor went on a witch hunt, allegedly, for voters who supported conservative principles. And it's been going on for years. Trace Gallagher starts out our story tonight. Trace. Megan, Wisconsin's unusual John Doe law gives prosecutors wide-ranging power to compel people to testify, to seize their documents, or even force them to maintain secrecy while being investigated. In this case, the law was used to find out if conservative groups like Wisconsin Club for Growth was coordinating with Governor Scott Walker to raise money during the recall of 2012. Remember, Governor Walker was being targeted for going after union benefits and collective bargaining. Critics maintained the Milwaukee County District Attorney John Chisholm was was using the law as a political weapon because his wife was a steward for the teachers union. Now the John Doe law was never used to go after Governor Walker, mind you. It was used to go after people who worked with Walker to place limits on benefits. Cindy Archer among them says late one night she was jolted awake by what she thought was a home invasion. Turned out to be a police raid. More than a dozen police officers holding a battering ram, yelling and pounding on her door. She says she was trying to calm down her dogs and get dressed with her body in full view of police. When she opened the door, she kept begging them not to shoot her dogs. Then she claims they stormed and rummaged through her house, told her not to move, took her phone, her computer, and said she could not tell anyone. Another woman who does not want to be identified tells a similar story, saying that she had kids, though, and they were frightened to death. And after police stormed her house, she claims she was threatened, told not to call a lawyer, and told not to mention the raid or she'd be hit with contempt of court charges. The same scenario played out at least eight more times at eight different homes. The head of Wisconsin Club for Growth, Eric O'Keefe, says these are people guilty of nothing more than exercising their First Amendment rights to support conservative causes. He says they were bullied by people with badges and law degrees. Listen. They came after my team because they were effective in political communication. They were resented by the prosecutors uh, who were, you know, who were in league with the left, representing the left attitude towards Scott Walker's union reforms. And they used the, the under color of law. They pursued us with tactics, which themselves are a, a severe punishment. Okay, filed a federal lawsuit, and a federal judge has ordered. Activities related to this unusual law must cease. And as early as this Friday, the U.S. Supreme Court may consider whether or not to hear this case. Megan. Unbelievable. Trace, thank you. David French is the National Review writer who brought this story to the country's attention in a piece that is already going viral. He joins me now. David, thank you for being here. You're a very smart man, Harvard educated, and you've done a lot of impressive things. When you started looking into this, could you believe these stories of local cops on a prosecutor's order who did manage to get a judge to sign a warrant? going in the middle of the night while children were sleeping in their beds, denying mother's requests that they not barge into the children's rooms and scaring the bejesus out of these children because they were investigating conservative donations and conservative advocacy. I couldn't believe it. I had heard rumors of this, but it wasn't until three brave women, one on the record, two off the record, came forward to tell their story and their family's story that the true dimensions were exposed. Uh, there were battering rams, there were police officers in their faces screaming at them, yelling at them, taunting them, telling them they couldn't uh, contact a lawyer, telling them they couldn't even tell friends and family what they were enduring. And at the same time, one of the women looked out and saw neighbors gathering around watching this raid take place, uh, saw a reporter who mysteriously found out about the raid walking around outside of her house, and she couldn't defend herself publicly. These families could not defend themselves publicly. And what were they, they accused of doing? Well, that, that is, that's what's so outrageous here. The investigation that ended up occurring was an investigation of protected speech. 
of political speech, uh, specifically issue advocacy, so ad advocating for conservative causes. This is just like the IRS deal, only it's local officials instead of feds. Oh, it's, it's the IRS if the IRS came with battering rams, if the IRS uh, intruded into the, sleeping, the bedrooms of sleeping children. I mean, this is a, 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 an intrusion that didn't just violate their rights. It's had lasting negative consequences for these families. Now, I know in the initial investigation, and we won't get into too many details, but we're going to keep expanding on this, but in the phase one, they did wind up prosecuting a couple people for some minor campaign uh, finance violations, and then it entered into phase two, which was, I guess, more expansive and invasive. And have there been any prosecutions? No, not in that phase two. Phase one began with an actual criminal complaint. Then it was expanded 18 separate times till at the end of it they were investigating literally constitutionally protected issue advocacy and they were using the fact that people had spoken freely supporting conservative causes as sufficient evidence to get these subpoenas in these search warrants. Who was the judge who signed off on these subpoenas? The judge is named Barbara Kluka, I believe is how you pronounce her name, and she did, she signed off on hundreds of pages worth of subpoenas and literally one afternoon worth of work. Uh, it was a rubber stamp process, it was not true judicial oversight, and the result has been catastrophic for citizens' rights. We're going to stay on this. this. We need to shine a light on this and we need to find out exactly what's happening. And John Chisholm, that prosecutor, he's welcome to come on The Kelly File to defend his actions any night. David, thank you. And I recommend the review, the, the read in National Review. Again, uh, Wisconsin's shame. If you Google that, you'll find it. Up next, a dramatic turn.